So we're going to just practice with a bouncing ball. We'll keep the shape relatively simple. Um, but what I want you to do is to animate a bounce. So just sort of, you know, plot out some drawings here. Um, and then think about how you might want to color this ball. Think of a ball design that's going to have an outline around it and then a fill color. And then I'll show you how we might add like a shadow layer. So just quickly animate a ball just so you have a few drawings, a few frames to work with. And then we'll get into some of these coloring techniques. So. I'm going to label my layer, my ball animation, and then I'm going to pre-make a few colors in the color palette. What I'm going to recommend is that you actually have a rough animation for your ball, and then we're going to clean up on a different layer. So here's my ball rough layer. And then I'm just going to use blue as my rough outline. And I'm just going to use the brush tool right now just to rough in this ball bouncing. And onion skin. So someone had a question earlier. Can you adjust the number of frames you're seeing with the onion skin? You can do that through um, moving these brackets right here in your timeline. Or you can go into the onion skin tab and you have a few more options here in that menu panel. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just selecting the frame in the timeline and with that selected, then I can just draw right in my stage area. And the stage has a camera view, so I'm just using that right now. So give yourself maybe one, two, three, four, five, about eight drawings to work with for this exercise here. I'm just going to have my ball kind of disappear in mid-bounce just so I don't have to draw too much. So as you can see, the way I'm doing it, I have pretty much left every other frame blank because um, I was just animating straight ahead. So an easy way to just fill in those gaps with that exposure is to look for this button here in the timeline. So it looks like this, and this will fill in the exposures in between. This is the button I'm referring to. Yeah, so basically I put a drawing on twos, but now there's a gap every other frame. So just I, fills in this just fills in any gap. Yeah, so if you select any number of like blank empty frames and then you press this button, it'll fill it in. Should we be doing this on twos? Um, yeah, yeah, there's no need to do it on ones. Okay, 
So here's my rough animation. This ball bouncing and then just conveniently disappears after 20 frames. Um, as a reminder too, you can select one of your drawings and then hit plus or minus on the number keypad on your, key on your keyboard. And that is also a, a way to extend the exposure of the drawing. In that case, you would select the drawing and then hit plus or minus. So here we go. So here's our rough animation. Now we can go in there and clean it up. So I'm going to recommend that you clean up with the pencil tools. Remember last week I showed you the difference between brushes and pencils. Pencils are going to be great because it gives you greater flexibility to change how it looks after you've drawn it. So we're going to use pencils to do our cleanup work. So grab your pencil tool, go to tool properties, and now you can set the look of your pencil line. So again, think of your ball, think of designing your ball. It's going to have an outline, it's going to have a color fill, and then eventually we're going to have like a shadow. So your outline can be anything. You can start with the presets here in Harmony. So I'll use this textured charcoal line. And let's see. And then remember I showed you the gray flower and the blue flower, right? So if you're using a textured brush or pencil in Harmony, in the gray view, it's showing you a low resolution version of that texture. So you want to check what it actually will look like when you render it out with the blue view. Um, and if you remember, we also need to add a color card to our scene so that we can actually see uh, any kind of dark lines. So I'm going to add a color card right now. Go to the plus menu in layers. Add a color card. By default, it will be a white one, depending on what it was last set to. So now I can check the blue flower and <coughs> zoom all the way to 100%. And then this is what my final rendered charcoal texture is going to look like. So again, blue flower shows you the final render view, but it doesn't play back. It's, it's just showing you one frame at a time. So we'll work in the, in the gray view, and then the texture won't be completely accurate. Um, as a reminder, Pressing number one and number two on the top of your keyboard lets you quickly zoom in and out of your camera view. So I'm going to delete these. And so, yep, go ahead, pick a pencil texture to outline your ball. Um, in Tool Properties, you can further go inside Pencil Properties by pressing this arrow and you can further adjust the texture. Um, if you were interested in importing a Photoshop brush texture, you would do it through this window. Um, so there's a lot of options here. All right, so I have found my pencil texture that I like. And then if you'd like to create a specific color for this outline ball, make sure you are setting up your color palette and naming it. So I'm going to create a new color swatch and I'm gonna name this ball outline. And I'm going to make it a deep green color. And then I'm gonna create an entirely new drawing layer on top. So I'm going to clean up my ball outline on a new layer. So when you do your walk cycle cleanup this week, I recommend making a brand new layer for ball clean, or you could call it ball color, however you'd like. Um, add and close. And basically, we're going to do the ball outline and the ball color on this new layer together. Um, your walk cycle rough drawings were attached to that peg bar, right? So what's great is that you can make a new layer and then attach it to the same peg bar and it will just follow and repeat your keyframes 
from that peg bar. So the way you have it parented and set up structurally, you can add new layers and just slip it in between. Um, so make a new layer, and then with the pencil tool and, and the color of your choice, make sure you're naming that color specifically outline. Um, go ahead and clean up the ball. So again, this is where you want to make sure your volume is going to stay consistent. And if you have a little bit of a shaky hand like I do, you can also adjust in your tool properties for the pencil, you can adjust center line smoothing, that option. So it'll just help smooth out your lines just a little bit if you increase that. The other thing you can do after you've drawn a pencil line is to use that contour editor and just move those points around. So the contour editor is the white arrow. You can select your pencil line and it will reveal that spine within the, the pencil line. And then you can click on those points. It'll give you these handles and it just lets you smooth out your shape. So this is the advantage of cleaning up with the pencil tool in Harmony. And this is pretty much how they do it in a studio setting. Uh, it, it just gives them control over their line that's how they get those crisp, clean looks. Um, and this is a good way also to kind of check that your volume is consistent. You don't have to redraw it. Just edit your pencil line using the contour editor. But there's also another trick um, that animators use. So let me just undo a bunch of this. Especially when drawing digitally, you want to get into the practice of drawing strokes um, that intersect. So don't worry so much about trying to like trace this in one go. What you want to do instead is draw one stroke. So stay loose with your arm and your elbow and your shoulder. If you do something like this, right, and then you draw your other stroke like this and like intersect these lines, then you can take the cutter tool, which is hidden inside this selection arrow, the black arrow, there's a cutter tool, and then you can go in there and just trim those extensions. So this is how you can get really crisp edges and corners. So imagine a box like this, right? Intersect your lines, and then take that cutter tool and just trim off the edges, and now you just get a really clean finish. So this is how animators do it, and that's how they achieve such a clean look. I mean, they do have a lot of muscle memory just from drawing over and over again. They probably have a very steady hand, but they're also using tricks like this. Um, so the cutter tool has, has its own set of options um, in the tool properties. So you might want to change it to something like um, a round style. So let's try this, right? If I zoom in. You'll see sometimes I'm, I'm trimming those edges and you see this flat edge, right? But if I change the tip of the cutter tool to round, then it will sort of round that off. So let's try this again. And then now I'll cut it off. So now it has this rounded tip to it. So a lot of things in Harmony are kind of designed to be specifically used that way. So the cutter tool is a super helpful option. Um, it'll get you really close. Like here, I'm, I'm gonna have to zoom in all the way to kind of use the cutter tool. You know, so sometimes it's not perfect and it doesn't always respond, but it gets you close enough. Um, in this case, I would go to the contour editor tool, grab that point and either delete it or just try to reposition it. <laughs> yeah, good question. Sometimes the eraser, depending on your settings too, uh, it, it may not always give you the result you're looking for either. So because I know I'm working with a pencil tool which has that spine inside, I know it's built with those points. So sometimes it's easier to just delete that vertice, vertice vertex, vertice, singular, <laughs> than to try to erase it. Yeah, that's a really good question, and it can be one of those strange things about working in harmony. 
clean up a few drawings. And you can use the onion skin to do that, to see what was previously drawn. This is also maybe helpful to use the drawing view. So I mentioned last week there's the camera view, there's the drawing view. And camera view will show you everything <coughs> in the scene. Whereas drawing view will just show you like that one piece of paper, that one index card that you're looking at. Um, in the drawing view, you have this light bulb button. And that's literally like the light tracer that you guys use in the flipbook assignment. So you can still see your layers underneath. You can see your rough layers if you turn on that light bulb, the light table view. Um, but I find that sometimes, especially when doing cleanup, you know, when you're focusing on one drawing at a time and you're not trying to think about the movement overall, just like focusing at <coughs> on one drawing at a time, that drawing view is going to be helpful for that. Now, some of you had rather complex designs, right? And so how do you kind of like copy and paste? So there's a few ways you could approach it. Uh, you could, a few ways you could approach copying and pasting. So I'll show you here. Let's say this first drawing, right, is like my full circle ball. It's not deformed yet. This is like its neutral, natural shape. And I want to copy and paste that and use it later on, right? That way I can guarantee that volume doesn't change. So there's a few ways you can approach that. You can take the black arrow, and that is your selection tool, and then just select. You can quickly just like kind of dash through your drawing and it will select all those strokes related. So just like this in Harmony, you can just select it like that. Uh, or you could actually you know, lasso around it. But in any, in any regard, uh, you can select that and then you can do Control C to copy and then Control V to paste on a new blank layer, Control V. And then you'll see it brought it into this new drawing, and then I can just select it again, and then physically move it over. Um, in the X sheet, remember, it shows you uh, each drawing is, is assigned a number. It's like given a name. Um, it's named after a number. And so my first drawing is one, and I just copy and pasted the strokes on that drawing and it landed here on drawing number seven. So these are two separate drawings, right, because the ball's in a different place, it, it's in a different position, um, but I just like reuse the same pencil stroke. So that's how you can just select your lines, copy, paste it onto a new fresh drawing. That's one way to copy and paste. Good. So remember the X sheet, right? So the X sheet shows you that vertical view and then it shows you every drawing that you've made and then each drawing is assigned a number. So when you actually select the strokes on the piece of paper and then you copy and paste it to a new one, it's creating an entirely different drawing. So see how this is called number three now? So that will allow you to make sort of the squash and stretch adjustments on your new iteration uh, without affecting the original. So it's, it's a good way, to, again, to keep volume consistent because you can copy and paste, you can make your new adjustments without affecting the original. So check your X sheet to make sure that it's actually copying and creating a new drawing. Is it right now, if I took the paint bucket and created a color for my ball, so I'm using this black as my ball line. And then I'm gonna create a color for my ball fill. So we'll do something like this color. Ball fill. 
right? I can take the paint bucket and then just color that in and you know, we're done. Pretty straightforward. But again, if we wanted that control to separate uh, the line from the color art, we can utilize these um, sub layers. The paint bucket has its own tool properties as well. And some things that you might want to consider do that um, is this button called apply to all frames and it looks like three little sheets of paper with an arrow if you turn that on and you paint bucket harmony will try to anticipate you and it might like automatically color in the subsequent frames but it really depends on the spacing of your drawings so if your drawings are closely spaced then harmony can recognize like a consistent shape across frames. So it could save you a little bit of time, but again, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, but you might wanna play with that button. And then another one that you might wanna consider is this gaps button. So if you are cleaning up your lines and you weren't very careful and your lines don't intersect, that means there's gonna be a little gap and the paint bucket won't work. So you can have the paint bucket kind of calculate that and you can tell it to, whenever you see a gap, like close, like automatically close the small gaps. Um, so you can adjust this setting. Sometimes you're trying to paint bucket and it doesn't work. Check your gaps. Um, it might help you to zoom in and look at your lines and just be like, did you actually close all of your lines? If you didn't, then come inside the paint tool, paint bucket tool, and you actually have a closed gap tool um, where that will let you add a little line to close it and then you'll be able to use the paint bucket. So apply to all frames and the closed gap tool. So if you press K, you'll see this blue outline appear. That's called a stroke in harmony. And you can show strokes or you know, hide them just by pressing K on and off. So when you do the paint bucket tool, what it's actually filling in is the shape created by this stroke, which is normally invisible. Um, so what we're gonna do is with our line art on the line art layer, we're going to use this button called create color art from line art. It looks like two little arcs with arrows pointing down. Um, and then when we come over to the color art layer, you'll see that it transferred the stroke of the outline down to the sub layer for color art. So this lets us automatically paint bucket this shape in exactly the shape that we need um, while keeping the outline separate from the color block. So there's sometimes in harmony, I like to say there's a button for everything. Um, so this is one of those cases where you have a button here to transfer your stroke from the outline down to the color art layer, and this will easily let you keep those things separate without having to redraw it. Um, so there is an eyeball in your sublayer window that will let you toggle you know, the, all of the sublayers together versus isolated. Um, and then K will let you show strokes um, to see whether it copied the stroke down or not. Um, and then you can press K again to hide that. So I mentioned that button called apply to all layers, right? So we can actually apply that same concept to transferring our strokes from the line art to the color art. So if you go to the black arrow, Tool Properties, it has that same button, Apply to All Frames. So once you've done your outline, you've cleaned up your lines, go to your black arrow, go to Apply to All Frames. Um, in your sub layers view, make sure you've actually outlined on this line art. And then press this button, Create Color Art from Line Art. And then if we had it Apply to All Frames and show strokes, it will transfer the outline down to the color art layer on all of your drawings. So this is really fast, and then you can go back in there, and then with the paint bucket, just move forward and just color all of that in. So again, the point of being able to separate your line from your color 
uh, gives you a lot of flexibility in post-production or for adding effects, compositing, um, and even doing more complex things within Harmony itself. Keeping these things separate is generally a good idea. Um, all right, so we can come back to the camera view. And we don't need my rough animation, but now we can start to see this sh uh, taking place. Okay, so let's say I wanted to further add detail to this ball, and I wanted to have a shadow on there. So I'm gonna make a color, a separate color for the ball's shadow. Add a swatch, change the color, make it a little bit darker. And now I have ball shadow. And I'm going to want to separate the shadow from the fill also, because in my head I'm already planning, I want to kind of blur it in After Effects. And I want to add like a glow to just the shadow because I'm trying to create this specific effect. So the more I can separate things in harmony, the more control I have later when compositing. Um, I could just come into my color art layer. Let me just turn off apply to all frames. I could come into my color art layer and I can go and select the stroke tool from the paint bucket menu. And if I show strokes, press K. I could actually just hand draw my shadow right here on the color art layer. So can you see how that added an invisible stroke? And I could take that paint bucket with my uh, shadow color here and just paint that in right there on the color art layer. So this is a great way to have to add some depth to your characters without having to draw that outline and then erasing it. You can use that stroke tool, which is an invisible line, and that gives you an additional area to fill in. Um, so you can definitely do that. You can go into your color art layer. Um, you can hand draw in shadow, uh, shadow effects or highlights with the stroke tool. But I wanted to do something extra. I wanted the shadow to be separate from the fill so that I can apply effects to it later on. So I would approach that like this. I would actually duplicate my entire clean layer. So I'm gonna right click and go to duplicate. Select layers. I'm gonna rename this to my shadow. And what I'm going to do is to delete, uh, go here. Basically, I want to keep the shape of the ball just so that I can add that shadow shape on top of it. I don't want to have to redraw it. Um, so I'm going to delete fill. Ah, that didn't work. And then I'm going to delete this outline too. Basically, I just want to be, I just want to retain the original ball shape so that I can draw this shadow in and then separate the shadow from the ball layer. Here's this. So I'm trying to just duplicate that without having to redraw it again, um, but Harmony is a little bit finicky. Let's use the unpaint option in the paint bucket. There we go. So I can actually apply this to all frames and unpaint this area for all my frames. That gives me that circle shape, and it will let me draw in the uh, shadow shape here. Stro 
like this, and keep this shadow color separate from the ball color. So do you see how I'm separating everything so that I have greater control later on in After Effects? So you can do that by using these sub-layers. Uh, you can also do that by duplicating the entire drawing layer and then deleting what you don't want. Um, and the purpose of this is really just to prevent yourself from having to redraw when you don't need to. So this button here, apply to line art or color art, if you toggle this, this will allow you to select both line and color or just one or the other. So I have this turned on if I select this. And I have it um, applied to all frames, so you see how it's selecting ahead of time. And then I can move it. And it's moving line and color together. But if I turn this off, it should only move the line. Yeah. So you can specify to Harmony whether you want it to select the line separate from the color block or together, and it's this button here. So that's a good question. There's a button for everything. Anyone else have questions? These are the small little workflow questions that if you, if you understand it, um, Harmony can become a really powerful and efficient tool for you. Oh, you want to change the color yeah. of the swatch? Then just double click that, uh, the color yeah. spot itself, and then you can pick. Um, if you were creating a color palette in a different program and you wanted to transfer it over, this is where you would type in those numbers. Um, or you could use the eyedropper tool, and you can import a screenshot of your color palette from you know, the color uh, creator online, import that into Harmony just as its own layer, then you can just eye drop your, your specific colors with this eye drop tool. I'm going to show you first just by exporting my shadow layer. It's just got this shape going on. So in node view, Right, this is sort of like how Harmony is organized under the hood. Every layer, every drawing layer you've made will show up as a node, which is one of these rectangles. And you want all of these nodes to plug into your composite. This is like um, in After Effects, your comp. And then the composite will output to the display, which is what you're seeing and then also write, where it's going to write it as a file, a video file, or an image sequence file. So um, the yellow boxes in the node view are menus, and we're going to specifically set this to um, a file type. So image format, we're going to go to, we're gonna go to PNG, and we want to make sure this is going to be set to color plus alpha. So alpha means transparency. Um, it's an alpha channel, and it's going to preserve the transparency and only give me that shadow shape. So that means if it's transparent, I can take it into After Effects and overlay it on top of the rest of the scene without having to like key out whatever background color. So alpha channel, you want to export things with alpha channels for easier compositing. So we're going to change that to PNG. And only certain image formats support alpha channels. Like a JPEG doesn't support alpha channels. So PNG is one of those formats that do. Um, and then we're going to organize ourselves. So by default, remember Harmony creates all of those folder structures on your hard drive or in your folder. Um, so one of those default folders is called frames. And this is where it's going to save all of your image sequence to. So we're, since we're going to um, export several versions of image sequences, I'm going to actually tell Harmony to save it in a specific uh, folder. So inside frames, well, let me come back out here, right? Here's all the um, default folders that Harmony makes. 
And by default, it's going to save your image sequence into frames, but I'm going to further organize that. So I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call this my, here's my shadow, ball shadow. Save it in that folder, select folder, and then you can even name your file, which I do recommend so it's a little bit easier to, s to tell apart. So ball shadow, and then it's going to name it like ball shadow 0001, ball shadow 0002. So every frame, every timing that I have in my timeline, every frame will be translated to a PNG file now. That's an image sequence. So we're going to do this. So this is all set up. It's going to be saved the way I want it, where I want it, close. And then now I go to File, Export, not Movie, go to Render Right Nodes, because we're going to render from our settings here in the right node. Uh, so Export, Render Right Nodes. And then let's say I'm only going up to frame, what is that, 22, I believe. So you really don't want to deal with a lot of blank frames, so just make sure your range is set. We'll hit OK. And then when we look at our hard drive, whoops. Right, here's the ball shadow I made, and then just, right. So this is literally my image sequence. 22 frames of the ball, it's named ball SD for shadow, one through 22, it's a PNG file. Um, and then now let's go over to After Effects real quick and make sure it did export with that transparency on it, with that alpha channel on it. So I'm gonna come back to my project folder and then I'm going to make a, an After Effects project. After Effects. So when you start working across multiple software, it's nice to just have each software have its own folder within, like inside your project folder. So let's come over to After Effects. Right, and we'll quickly make a new project. We'll make a new composition. Just make sure that's 1920 by 1080. Uh, this frame rate can be 24 because we're animating in 24 in harmony. So change that, make sure it's square pixels. And everything looks good. Again, we'll just name this after our scene. Here's our main scene. It's the ball. All right. Here's our comp. And then we're going to create Folder. This is we're gonna um, import all of the different like strips <coughs> from Harmony, our character animation. So here, Control I, and then we're gonna go to my project folder, which is inside Harmony. And then I'm going to import that image sequence. So to import an image sequence into After Effects means that we want to import all of these separate frames but have After Effects treat it like video footage. Um, and the reason why we do this is so that we can retain the quality of the frames, especially if you've got textures. Um, sometimes rendering as a video will compress it, right? We've been using Apple ProRes 422HQ, which is a fairly high quality compression, but nevertheless, it is degrading the image a little bit. And so that's the advantage of working with image sequences. It doesn't degrade as quickly as if you're exporting um, video files multiple times, going from program to program. So all you need to do is select the first image in your image sequence, and then change it import as footage. And here under sequence options, you're going to see that, here's that option to import it as a sequence. And so if you select this, After Effects will recognize, oh, it's actually 1 through 22, and it will bring it all in. So we're going to do that. And it comes in like this icon. So it's, it's treating it like footage, <coughs> but 
it's actually my PNG image sequence. Now let's see if the alpha channel got imported to, okay, it did not. And so that means we need to tell Harmony more specifically how to export this. Um, what I forgot is that I had this soloed um, instead of just turned off. So I had all of these turned on and that's why it got rendered out. So let's try this again. So I have all my other layers turned off now and let's do this. Export, render write nodes, okay. And it's just gonna replace all those PNGs, which is fine. Now I'll come back to After Effects, I'm gonna refresh this. So right click, reload footage. There we go. And now I've exported it correctly. Whenever you see this checkerboard, it means there's an alpha channel there. It means it's transparent. So now I have this shadow layer separated. Um, I can put in you know, my own background here. Oops, put it underneath, of course. Um, right, and so it's totally transparent. It just exported that shape from Harmony. So now you can see how you could begin to layer elements in After Effects, combining it with your drawn animation in Harmony. So there's another thing in Harmony that I want to show you. So remember our original layer, we had this ball. We had the outline, we had the fill, right? Here's the, go to drawing view. Here's our line, here's our fill, right? Let's say we still want to retain the ability to treat those separately in After Effects. Um, but because they're on sub layers, we do have to tell Harmony to do an additional thing to treat it separately. I'm just going to turn this off. The camera. Okay. Um, so here's the written steps for exporting as an image sequence out of Harmony. And then here's some additional steps to separate the export, that separate the line art from the color art. And we're going to apply a specific node to that. Um, all right, so the node view comes with a node library. And I think I mentioned this the first day, but Harmony is also capable of compositing, just like After Effects is. Um, I'll show you some of those things on a different week. This week, I just want you to focus on your character animation, coloring, cleaning up, and then getting that into the After Effects environment. Um, compositing in Harmony, I think, is not as straightforward as doing it in After Effects, which is why we'll cover it later. Um, but it would require picking a node effect and then pulling it into the node view and connecting all those nodes in a certain relationship, and then that's how it takes effect. Um, for now, though, we're going to type in something called Layer Selector. And what this will let us do, I'm just clicking and dragging it over to the node view. This will let us separate our line art from our color art, and it'll let us tell Harmony, hey, Harmony, just export me my line art. Just export me my color art. Um, Inside the line art menu, right, you've got the view of all of your overlays. So if I had kind of just planned this out a little bit better, I would have actually had the ball shadow in one of these sub layers instead of a totally separate layer. Um, but I guess I was able to show you both ways. So we're gonna select one. Let's say, all right, let's just export the line art first. So select that. And then we are going to connect this. So here's my ball color layer. Right now it's plugging into the composite. I'm actually going to plug it into my layer selector and then coming out from the bottom of the layer selector, plug that into composite. And so now I'm telling Harmony, even in my camera view, it's only going to be showing me the line art. I can have it show me both. I can also have, me, have it show me just one or the other. So we're gonna start with line art, 
basically just isolating the line art. And then uh, with our right settings already set up for an image sequence, let's do the same thing. Oh, actually, you know what? I need to save it into a new folder. So come back to your right node, and we're going to make a new folder for just our line art. So make a new folder, line art, or I should call it ball, so it's consistent. All right, so like that. And then change the file name too. So ball, line, and then make sure it's an alpha channel. And then we are going to close that. And then go to file, export, render right node, and then OK. Come to After Effects. And we're going to import the line art now. So here's my line art. I can select the first PNG in my sequence. Make sure sequence options, PNG sequence is selected. After Effects will recognize all um, 22 frames, import that. And now I have just the line art. And then I can bring it in and start to composite my ball animation, start adding different effects. So come back to Harmony. Now let's just export that color art. So with my layer selector node already um, plugged in properly, I'm just going to go and change that from line art to only show me the color art. And then now, five, oh no, sorry. Make sure it's saving into the right folder. So let's make a new folder for just the color. New folder, ball color. Change the file name also, I'll just call it fill. And then close and save that. File and export. Render right node. That's exporting all those frames. Come to After Effects. And then import oh, command or control I. Import our color. Just select the first PNG. Make sure PNG sequence is selected. Make sure it's import as footage. Import that. And then here is just our fill. So, and then that gives us all of this flexibility to apply different treatments, different filters, different effects on line, color, shadow. So what I wanted to do was to just put a blur on this shadow. So I'll select my shadow layer. Where did I go? Here it is. Um, Zooming in and out of the composition view in After Effects is a uh, period and comma. So it's a different set of shortcuts than <laughs> Harmony. You'll just have to, you'll just have to memorize it. Um, but I've got my shadow here, right? So I can apply that glow or apply that blur that I had wanted to originally. So we could do, eh, let's just do like a smart blur. Come up here, change that. Here, let's see it. Maybe this one is not so smart. Let's try a different one. Blur. So you see how that's kind of blurring the edge there. Um, I could adjust the opacity even more. Turn that down just a tiny little bit. Um, I can change this to a different blending mode. I could try <coughs> multiplying it, adjusting the opacity. Um, I could apply different effects to just the line. Um, here, let me search for Glow, stylize, glow, there we go. Um, you can play with some of these settings. Glow radius, we could change the color of that glow. Composite, pop, maybe multiply. 
fine. Anyway, I think you get the idea. So the color animation you do in Harmony can be taken into After Effects in this way. And when you composite with background art, you can further make your hand-drawn uh, animations feel like it's part of this scene that you've created. Um, so it involves several steps, but it's just to show you that you have actually a lot of control and Harmony is set up so that you could easily control each of these aspects. Um, on a production, what we're doing here right now is usually um, a separate department. So this is really getting into post-production, compositing, special effects, you know. Um, even on a 2D production, it's not just about the character animation, it's about how are you going to finish the scene and how are you going to add those effects that make it feel like it's, it's like a real world. Um, and so this is what is generally what the process is like. Um, and then you'll see in After Effects, you know, like there's all of these layers are separate. It just gives you all of this different control. Um, and then After Effects lets you combine all these different elements. If you wanted to bring in like a video background, you know, composite your drawn animation over video footage, you know, this is how you would do it. And then you can add color effects to your drawn layers, make it feel like it's part of that video. Um, so this is just to show you the depth of what's possible. Um, obviously, if you think you can try it and you think you have an application for it for your walk scene this week, then definitely try it. Um, at the very least, um, you can hold down um, Alt to just sort of deselect your node and, and unattach them. Um, but at the very least, you will color and clean up your rough animation. You'll export it out of Harmony with a transparent back. So you, you are going to use this right node and you're going to set it to a PNG uh, with an alpha channel and you're going to export this image sequence so that you can import it into After Effects and then combine it with your 